everybody and welcome to Stone Avoid. I'm Jay Phillips and today I'm bringing you the Battle Simulator from Force of Will. This is a new application that they just launched a few days ago. It's still in beta and it has a few kinks to work out. However, as it stands right now, it does have a few really great things that I want to show you guys before we get into a little bit of what is the negative. Uh, really quick, you'll see the main screen here with the Force of Will Battle Simulator. Uh, big, bright, looks amazing. The rulers in the background change every time you load up the game, which is really awesome. You have three main icons right here, which is the battle, which is where you click on to, you know, play against other players. The deck building, which is by far the cleanest, best part of the entire simulator so far. And a replay video section where you can watch old footage of what you already had. Now, this is isn't something that they have in most TCG games, so you can't go back and look at stuff. You usually have to use a third-party app for this. So really great that they include it in the start of the, you know, battle simulator from the get-go. Over here, you'll see settings where you can adjust your volume uh, and your sound effects uh, for more or less. And it has two languages. It's in English and in Japanese right now. Uh, end game, delete, catch, all the little things that you might need. Uh, and also credits in case you actually want to look through that. Uh, you can click on the deck over here to go ahead and look at one of the best parts of the the whole experience so far, which is the deck building. It comes with the starter decks pre-built for you that you guys can get at your local LGS. And it also has, you know, a new deck build down here where you can go ahead and click on to build your own deck. Or you can just have your ones that you've already pre-constructed up here as well. Uh, so let's click on one of these. This is a deck that I used last night against Don Bowie on Twitch last night, so if you guys want to check that out, uh, we are going to start streaming on Twitch a lot more, so you guys can watch us actually play this, and also we'll update that eventually to YouTube, so you guys can watch it there as well. However, the deck building uh, part of this app is by far the best part. Uh, the deck building is as easy as dragging cards in, or dragging cards out as you feel fit, you can also right click on them to delete them from this main menu here. Uh, works for the sideboard as well. If you double click, you can add cards in that way. And if you, you already have a card in your deck, however you want it, you can double click to add more of that card as well. The intuitiveness, the clean design that is the deck building in total is really, really nice. You have your cards over here on the left hand side displaying uh, the card image itself the name, the effects of the card, uh, that's really simple and clean since the images down here are kind of small and you can't really see them. Uh, but it, it, you know, almost every TCG has that. You can come over here and change uh, it over to your stats, which shows you how much of a card you have at you know, one cost, how many cards you have at two cost, and so on and so forth, and also the amount of uh, will that you have distributed uh, color-wise, and your creatures and spells in addition to that. Uh, of course, the deck looks a little funny since we started dragging stuff back and forth here. Uh, but overall, it's a really nice feature to have that. And the search feature is pretty easy to use. You can select the color of will you want, the uh, amount of mana that the spell should cost, uh, whatever you feel that fit to be. Click search. It's going to pull up all those cards really easy. You can also just clear that back out and look at all the cards at once in the side menu uh, and go ahead and scroll through as you feel as you want to. I have five selected there. Um, you can also select the type, so you can select J rulers, look through those, or just type in keywords uh, together like quick cast if you want to see everything that you can play instantly. Uh, the search feature is very easy to actually look through and find what you need, uh, so super super enjoyable in general is, is just what I want to get from this. Uh, I really like the way that they designed this. Uh, the one thing that I will have to say that's a little bit annoying is if the game crashes, there are some issues for people who didn't back up their uh, deck files, you can actually lose those. If the game's crashed on me a few times since I've had it uh, loaded, uh, unfortunately a few times why I've tried to record this video actually, so this is probably my third or fourth attempt trying to do this. The uh, save button right down here does save your deck uh, right here. However, if it gets corrupted and you have to delete it, you actually have to pull that file out of the source file, which is really easy to get to because it is kind of open. And you'll see what I mean if you launch the game yourself. You can actually access the files uh, very simply on on the uh, download area where you download it into your system. Uh, outside of that, uh, I want to show you guys really quick the battle uh, simulator part of this. Uh, I'm not going to play an actual match, I just want to show you guys what that page looks like. 
But first I gotta switch over to a uh, black screen real quick as when you load up into the battle simulator part of this, uh, it actually will display information you don't actually want uh, people to be able to see. So now that I got that deleted, let's bring you guys back. Uh, so here you guys can see the this is what the hosting and connecting part of the battle simulator looks like. Uh, you'll see right up here in the center, this little area that says IP address. Uh, this is actually something I had to delete before I brought you guys over here. Uh, why? Because it displays the IP address of the last person I played against. Uh, which, for a lot of people who don't know too much about IPs and stuff like that, it's the way that you know uh, the router information, stuff like that, of the person where they're coming from. Uh, it gives away a little bit of personal information, not too much. The main uh, important thing is that to play this against somebody else, you have to have port forwarding open, which allows you know people to kind of manipulate stuff on your end. Uh, you know, find information about you, things that you don't want them to know. Uh, but that's here or there. Uh, it, it is a real problem. Um, the biggest problem is that it doesn't have a uh, auto finding feature. You can't just find somebody. You actually have to input the IP address of the person you want to play. So for a lot of people who pick this up, hoping that this would be the solution to their local LGS, not supporting Force of Will the way that they want them to, or having enough friends in general in the area that they want to play against, this is not a solution for them. This is this is still excluding them from the main fun, as if they don't know anybody uh, that plays a Force of Will, they're not going to have anybody that's going to be willing to give them their IP address, join into a game with them, and play. Uh, that's all in addition to the app being very small with limited amount of cards. That part's not really important. This is. This is a huge problem. However, uh, that aside, let's get back to some more good stuff because I know everybody's going to be talking about this. We're also going to be talking about this in the podcast, so I don't want to drown this out too much. Uh, this right here is the uh, connecting into another player uh, menu. You click this and it'll go ahead and start searching for the player that you have the IP address set in for. Uh, and this button down here is if you want to host a game. Um, I click this and show you guys what all that looks like. However, once again, it's going to display that personal information I don't want out there, uh, which made this really awkward to uh, do on stream last night. We actually ended up uh, showing a bit of our information, uh, and that's just not something you want. Uh, however, over here, you can choose your deck that you want. It brings up everything that you had in that deck builders area. Uh, my two pre-cons, the deck that I played against Dawn with last night, and all of the starter decks, which we're going to actually end up doing a video of each one of those. Uh, here you can type in your name, however you want, um, of course I'm just going to type in, uh, ooh, not that, uh, <laughs> type in J, uh, this is your avatar icon, of course you gotta choose Feasting, because she's amazing, and here you can go ahead and select different little emoji icons for whoever you want, uh, it doesn't have to be all the same, it can be whoever you want, and it's kind of a nice little cute little way to interact with your, uh, with your opponent, via emojis considering there's no vocal way to uh, talk through here or a chat dialogue that we could actually find during gameplay which is a little bit awkward but it does help uh, keep people from bad mouthing each other if this game does go to a more open searching area because the IP address thing might only be for the beta we don't actually know uh, but it'd be interesting to see uh, so I can't really show you guys the game um, or anything else like that, so this is kind of where this is going to end. Uh, one more thing to point out, this down here is a nice little uh, tips box, which is kind of cool to look at. Uh, it's really easy to go back and forth between all the different menus here. This is what the uh, video capture stuff looks like. Uh, everything's really clean. Uh, I really do like this game. I really hope that it does open up uh, and allow it to be more accessible for everybody. Um, however, until the beta is over and the game actually launches, we don't necessarily know. Uh, but that's all I can really say for it about right now, guys. Definitely check our videos of the actual gameplay so you guys can see what that looks like. Because I know most of you guys aren't going to be able to actually get to do that yourself right now. Uh, but in which way, thank you guys for watching, uh, and I'll hopefully see you guys later.